The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on facts. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Square Dance. It is 9.50 p.m. Saturday night, October 14th, 1949. There is a square dance in progress at the fun spot, a barn-like dance hall on the outskirts of Bankerville in West Texas. Mrs. Mort Rogers, a rancher's wife, is seated in the corner, waiting for her husband to return with some soda pop. She looks up as a stranger approaches. Well, looks like I found me a pretty little wallflower. How come you ain't dancing, man? Reckon I'm a little out of breath from the last one. My husband went to fetch me some soda pop. Good. While he's fetching it, you and me can dance. Not a couple needing that square over there. Come on. No, uh, no, thank you. But I, I'd rather wait for him. Oh, you're just going to waste sitting there. Come on. Oh, please, I, I'd rather not. No, I ain't the kind of a man who takes no for an answer, especially from a pretty gal. I told you I don't want to dance with you. It's on my arm, please. Come on. Yeah, what's going on here? What's the matter, Harry? Oh, um, uh, I was waiting for you. And... and I just happened by and asked her for a dance, that's all. And left finger marks all over her arm. Looks like you asked pretty rough. Ain't no harm done. You gonna get hard about it? Take these pop bottles, Harry. I'm not done. I said take them. Now, you want to repeat that question? Uh, place is probably full of friends of yours. I don't know anybody around here. I, I just happen in. Why don't you just happen out? Before you get in trouble. Go ahead, beat it. All right. Well, maybe I'll meet you alone sometime. And it's time you want to try... No, more, please. Let him go. I, I'm all right. Well, there seems to be somebody like that. Wandering in where people having fun. Forget about him. He went out. Now, drink your pot. Here. Look at you, honey. You're shaking. Not from him. It's a little chilly in here now. That's all. Where's that little jacket you brought? I left it out in the car. I'll go fetch it for you. Well, ain't that cold, Mort? Oh, no, no. Just turn him blue or something. <laughs> All right. Would you mind getting it for me? Oh, I said I would, didn't I? Any more strangers ask you to dance, hit them with that pop bottle. <laughs> I'll be all right. Jack is in the back seat. All right, I'll find him. Well, look who's here. Well, it's you, huh? What you doing hanging around these cars? Thought I told you to get lost. Better watch your tongue. You ain't surrounded by friends now. <laughs> I figured you'd follow me out. I didn't follow you out. I come out to get my wife's jacket. And as for friends, mister, I don't need any to hand the likes of you. Now, why don't you get while the getting's good? Too bad your wife didn't come out to get her own jacket. Yeah, she's kind of cute. <laughs> Shut up. Right yeah, now. If I would have asked her to dance if she hadn't given me the eye. Why, are you? Uh, come on, get up. Get up and fight. Or get up and run. I'll fight. Or we'll fight my way with this. I might have known someone like you to carry a knife. You're going to know it. Good. Just once more for good measure. <laughs> Guess your wife ain't gonna be so particular who she dances with from now on. When 
Mort Rogers failed to return to the dance, his wife came out to look for him. Her screams as she found the body brought dancers streaming from the hall. Somebody summoned the sheriff, and he in turn called for the help of a Texas ranger. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned. He arrived at the parking lot outside the fun spot shortly after midnight. Howdy, Sheriff. Well, howdy, Jace. I'm glad you were close by. Here's the body. Uh huh. Radio was buzzing with calls as I drove in. KTXA's ordering roadblocks set up on every highway near here for 100 miles. Yeah, I know. I phoned in a description of a stranger who was at the dance tonight. Yeah, I heard it. Let's hope they can pick him up. Well, they'd have got him sure if I'd had the description earlier, but it took almost an hour to get Miss Rogers so she could talk. Is she the dead man's wife? Yeah. Saw the whole thing then, huh? No. No, she was inside when it happened. Come out and found the body. Well, then why the pickup for the stranger in particular? Rogers have trouble with him? Just words. Nothing anybody saw. It tried to force Miss Rogers to dance with him, the way she tells it. Rogers come along, saw what was going on, and ordered the fella out. Whole thing happened less than two hours ago. Well, killer can't be too far away, then. Yeah, far enough. Yeah, but if the roadblocks don't pick him up, we'll know he's either living or hiding within a two-hour ride from here. Could be a hundred yards away or a hundred miles away. Mm. Even then, he might not be the one. Over 60 couple at the dance tonight. Any one of them could have stepped outside... I haven't let a car pull out since I got here. Good. You shake everybody down? Yeah, didn't find anything on anybody, though. Deputy has two knives and a gun that were ditched under benches when he started searching. Knives clean? As far as I could tell. I'll send them through to Austin make sure. If there's any blood left on one of them, the lab will find it. Yeah. We're not going to have to wait for that, though. Not if the killer's still around. Why? This wound on Roger's throat cut the juggler. See how the blood spurted out. Killer couldn't miss getting some of that blood on his clothes. You check for that on the shakedown? Well, just their hands, Jace. You better line them up again inside. Blood's had time to dry. Killer may have had a chance to try and wash it out, but we'll have to check every suspicious-looking stain. Well, I got the names and addresses of everybody in the place. Good. You can use that as a checklist. Make sure nobody's taken a run out since you got here. Deputy's been stationed all around. All doors have been locked, except this one leading out to the parking lot. I had let folks out here because... Some of them have got babies sleeping in their cars. Yeah, I understand. Well, let's get them in. Right. All right, inside again, folks. Everybody inside. Joe, Charlie Higgins, don't let any stragglers hang back. Keep them moving. Hey, you better send one of your deputies into town. Dig up some clothes from the jail or someplace. If you find any suspicious stains, a few of these people might not have anything to wear home. <laughs> Sheriff's list checked out 100%. Nobody to run. A couple of cop folks had stains on their shirts and jeans. We took their clothes and sent them through to Austin for analysis. Next morning, I got my report. A long-distance call from my chief, Captain Stinson. Austin Lab just finished with the stuff you sent through, Jace. Both knives were clean. I see. How about the clothing, Captain? Well, there was human blood in one of the shirts. A small stain. According to your report, the cop folks you got it from said he'd cut himself and got a little blood on it. Lab says the bloodstain is type O. Type O, huh? That's right. Well, he's not our boy then. Medical examiner did an autopsy on Rogers during the night. Rogers' blood was A B. Everything keeps pointing to the stranger who got away. You think Mrs. Rogers gave a good description? Well, I think so. She gave me the same rundown she gave the sheriff. Claims she'll never forget what he looked like. Do you think she'd recognize a photo of him if she saw it? I'm sure she would. Good. The boys at Austin are going through the gallery pulling shots of all known criminals who fit that description. Especially the ones who are too free with a knife. I'll bring the photos down myself. Let Mrs. Rogers go over them. While I'm waiting, I think I'll have a look through the ranch area around here. All we know about the man we're after is that he got away. We don't know whether he was in a car or on foot or mounted. A few cowpokes did come into the dance on horses. I see. The fellow we're looking for might be a new hand just drifted into the territory. I got charcoal in my horse trailer. Sheriff's getting his mouth. But keep us busy until you get here, unless you have another idea. No, Jace, you go ahead. I'll see you tonight. Right. Bye, Captain. Bye, Jace. Ready, Sheriff? If you are, my mount's all saddled. Yeah, I'll get charcoal out of the trailer. Let's go. <laughs> We 
rode from ranch to ranch, taking shortcuts through the gullies and arroyos, working through the good grazing as well as the badlands, riding close to get a good look at cowpokes working the range wherever we spotted them. We're on Blue Baker's land now. Be able to see the ranch house when we reach the end of these trees. How many hands he got on the place? Three. And they've been around for quite a spell. Unless he took on a new one. Brubaker. That seems to me his name was on the list of folks who were at the dance. Yeah, he was there with his wife. Well, then he was asked if he'd noticed the stranger. Asked everybody that. If anybody by that description was working for him, he'd spoke up. Well, I thought we might talk to his hands. Even if they weren't at the dance, they might have noticed a stranger around someplace. Possible. Worth a try. Yeah. Hey, there's Blue Baker now climbing into his tractor there with the tool shed. Hey, Blue Baker! He sees us. Howdy, Sheriff. Ranger. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh Charlie. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Well, howdy. Howdy. Glad to see you, Sheriff. Matter of fact, I've been thinking of phoning you. You got some information on the Rogers case? Well, no. It's something I guess I shouldn't even be bothering you with right now. Just wanted to put in a little complaint. What kind of complaint, Brubaker? Well, sir, just before the dance last night, the missus and me did some shopping in town. Matter of fact, going to the dance was an afterthought. Just decided to drop in when we was driving home and pass the fun spot. Mm -hmm. Well, sir, like I said, I hate to bother you about it, but uh, a couple of things were stolen out of my pickup. While we was at the dance. New bridle I'd bought in town and a new pair of wire clippers. Are you sure those things were taken while you were at the dance? Well, they couldn't have been taken any place else. They were the last things we bought before we went to the dance. Put them on the shelf behind the cab seat. Could be something to this, Jake. You sure could. Anybody stealing things from a car wouldn't be doing it while you and your deputies were all over the place. And we were there till after everybody had cleared out. Mm. Stuff must have been taken out of Brubaker's pickup before Rogers was killed. Say, as a matter of fact, Rogers might have surprised somebody going through the cars. I wouldn't rule out the stranger we're looking for. He left the dance hall before Rogers went outside. Bridle and wire clippers wouldn't be easy to trace. I wonder if he might have taken something else. Well, I haven't had any other complaints. And people don't always complain. Thanks, Brubaker. Come on, Sheriff. Let's get back to town. Sure, sure. So long. So long. Get up, Charlie. Come on. Now, well, let's go. You planning to check over that dance list again? We'll call every name on it. See if anything else was taken from that parking lot. Up, Charlie. Come on, boy. Let's go. go. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Tonight, over most of these NBC stations, Theater Guild on the Air will feature Raymond Massey and Shirley Booth in Ethan Frome. Mr. Massey also starred in the play's original production in 1936, while Miss Booth is well known for her dramatic performances on radio and the Broadway stage. Remember to hear them on the Theater Guild on the Air presentation of Ethan Frome tonight. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and tonight's case, Square Dance. An authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. The sheriff and his deputies started a phone check of people who'd been at the dance, asking them to list missing articles. Meanwhile, Captain Stinson drove in with the gallery shots of possible suspects. We took them over to the funeral home to see if Mrs. Rogers could identify the stranger who'd quarreled with her husband. The captain showed them to her, one by one. <laughs> Now, how about this one, Mrs. Rogers? No. Well, this is the last one. No. That's not him either. Yes, that does it, Jace. The man we're after isn't a known criminal. Not in this state, anyhow. Can I... Can I go back to my husband now? I, I want to be near him until they have... Sure, ma'am. Go ahead. We wasn't even married a year. Six months when I had our first anniversary. I might as well get back to the sheriff's office, Captain. Yeah. Young bride like that. A nice future the killer left her. We gotta get him. I'll stay on until hey, I... Hey, Jake! 
Captain! Well, there's the sheriff now. Looks like we've hit something on that phone check, Jace. Deputy just got a call from Perny Richards. Not the old man, but Perny Jr. Something missing from his car? Yeah. Ladies, Hamilton wristwatch. Perny bought it for his gal's birthday. Left it in the glove compartment of the car. Was fixing to surprise her with it today. Hey, that's going to help, Jace. Plenty. New purchase like that, the jeweler will have a record of the serial number on the watch. Killer might try to sell it or pawn it someplace. He might just give it to some gal. I don't think so. Man we're after doesn't sound like he'd have a gal of his own. Come on. Let's get a rundown on that watch. We got the serial number and put out a bulletin to jewelers and pawn shops, all the logical places where a man might dispose of a watch. Because it was Sunday, we had a break. The bulletins would be on file before the killer had a chance to unload. Meanwhile, Captain Stinson was in phone contact with Austin, digging up another angle. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Well, thanks. No, not necessarily. Might not mean anything, but it can't hurt us. I'll call you later if I need anything else. Right. Goodbye. I have anything? A little. I asked them to check open files, unsolved cases of petty theft, especially things taken from cars in dance hall parking lots. There must be plenty of cases like that. The same man wouldn't be responsible for all of them. No, but a couple of cases follow a pattern, Jace. I've written them down. Now, look here. Portable radio stolen from a car a week before last, outside of Elderton. Roadhouse there was having a square dance. And here's a constable's report. Same night, same place. Man answering the description of our stranger got in a beef. He pulled a knife on a fella. Didn't get a chance to use it, though. And ran before the law could get there. Hey, that's good. Now, here's another one. Also a square dance. South of here at Pa's Crossing. Happened a month ago. Manager at the dance hall ordered some fella out for bothering a woman. Again, the same description. Fella went outside and threw a rock through a window and got away. Cars had been looted. That's our boy, all right. Yeah, but we still don't know who he is. Uh, something we do know, though. Look at this county map. He's been here in Bankerville, west of here in Elderton, and south of here at Parr's Crossing, all within a month. Yeah, that's right. Means he must be living in this area or hanging around at some place. Draw a circle around the three spots he's been seen at. Gives us a radius of about 40 miles in any direction. And that fits, because he wasn't picked up in the roadblocks. I don't know, Jace. He's been a stranger in all three places. And they're the only towns around here. Most of the area in the middle of your circle is hill country and badlands. And not many ranches he might be working on. No, but there's a lot of prospecting going on in those badlands, Captain. Big new kick. Not gold or silver anymore. Uranium. Hmm. Hey, not many people would see a prospector. Not unless he had a habit of wandering into some town on a Saturday night with a yen for square dancing. All right, Jase, I'll buy it. What's your move? Thought the sheriff and I might do a little prospecting, too. <laughs> Uranium? No. A man with a knife. The sheriff put in with me. Next morning, we loaded his horse into my trailer with charcoal and headed into the Badlands. The old settlement's up ahead. We can leave the car at Red Miller's store. I thought the settlement was deserted. Well, it was for a few years, but Miller opened up again because of this prospecting thing. Reckon they give him enough trade to keep going. It's either they buy from him or take a car trip every time they have to lay in supplies. I never thought of that. Miller may have seen our man. Possible. Coming into the settlement now. Ghost town. Where's the store? Long Dolby building just ahead. A lot of cars parked under a shed just behind it. I, I see it. Well, I hope he's got some soft drinks and a way of keeping them cold. This sun's a scorcher. Well, we'll be able to wet your whistle in a minute. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. Hardly think Miller could make a living here. Well, there's just him and his old lady. I reckon they don't need much to get by. Looks like we'll be his only customers. Hello? Anybody here? Oh, well, howdy. Howdy, Miss Miller. Uh, this here is Ranger Jace Pearson. Howdy, howdy ma'am. Uh, where's uh, Reb, Miss Miller? Oh, now he's just plain gonna die because he missed you, Sheriff. 
But he drove up to Arrington to see the duck. She's back again. Oh, that's too bad. But he'll be back for supper if you can stay. We might have to. Depends on whether or not you can help us. Somebody here can help us, all right. What is it, Jace? Take a look in this showcase. Well, I'll be... I'd called his attention to something that stood out like a sore thumb. The store was run down, its shelves barely stocked with necessities. But there before our eyes, in the dirty showcase with cracks running through the glass, was a brand new Hamilton wristwatch. Reb is stocking some mighty fancy merchandise, ain't he, Ms. Miller? Oh, you mean that watch? Do you want to buy it? All we want to know is where you got it. Well, Reb took it in trade from a fellow who run a bill here. What's his name? Why, Carp's his last name. Don't know his first one. That, uh, that watch ain't stolen, is it? We can tell you that in a minute. Get it out of the case, Sheriff. Right. You remember the serial number? Yeah, I got it written down in my book. Pry the back cover off. Yeah. Fingernails won't do it. I'll have to find something. When did this carp bring the watch in, ma'am? Yesterday. Sunday. Reb's always trusting people, you know. Carp owed him more than $20. Instead of cash, you give Reb the watch and a pair of wire clippers. Wire clippers? You hear that, Sheriff? I sure did. I'll have this watch case open in a minute. Oh, I told Reb not to trust nobody. Reckon Carp wouldn't even trade here if he had cash. Couldn't give Reb no money. Oh, no, but when he come back yesterday, he had a new bridle for his horse. Reckon he had to pay cash for that someplace. You're reckoning wrong, Mrs. Miller. You got that bridle the same way you got the watch and wire clippers. Yeah, that does it. Here's the number, Jace. H four two seven nine nine one. H four two seven nine. That's it, all right. Pops our boy. Where is he? Well, he's out in the hills, I reckon. He saddled up and rode off after he brought our car back yesterday. He had your car? All oh, Saturday night, Sheriff. You know, Reb. He'll lend anything to anybody. That's why we ain't got nothing ourselves. Carp never even paid him for the gas he used up. Then he had the nerve to borrow his shirt and jeans while he used my tub to scrub out his old clothes. And what a scarce as it is. Don't need two guesses what he was scrubbing for, Sheriff. You can say that again. Come on, Sheriff. Let's get the horses and move. Well, look here. Don't you want to know what he looks like? Thanks, ma'am. But that's something we already know. It was rough going through the Badlands, and the territory we had to cover was big. We met prospectors here and there, but not carp. At the end of our second day, the trail led to rocky ground, thinning out in spots and disappearing in others. We kept going until the sun dipped under the rim and darkness came fast. Oh, I can't see anything, Jace. If the tracks were heavier, we could keep going, but the ground's too hard. Can't pick up marks like that by flashlight. I know. Better find a campsite. Rustle some grub. You can do the eating. All I want is a place to rest my bones. We'll find a spot when we get on level ground. Up, Charlie. Come on. Come on, up, boy. Sheriff. Yeah? Looks like somebody solved our camp problem for us. Over there at the right. Sparks. Fire behind those rocks. Circle around. Cart, maybe. Could be. It's a cinch at somebody. Let's ride for it. Up, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. See the fire now, Jace. Man getting up. He can't see us yet. Here's us coming. Looks like a big fella. Carp is big. This is Roger said, about 6'3. His horse is there, Jace. He's moving over toward it. He'll be able to see us in a minute. Drift away from me. Leave a little distance between us. All right. Get over, boy. That's good. Seems to be waiting. Yeah. Don't go all the way in mounted. Pull up and we'll walk to him. Whoa, whoa, oh, Shark. Oh, whoa, boy. Oh. Keep the same distance. Yeah. Who's that out there? We're looking for somebody. Who? I'll tell you in a minute. Keep your eyes open, Sheriff. Maybe you better tell me now. A fellow named Carp. Is that you? What do you want to see Carp about? It's kind of a personal matter. Unless you're Carp. He's up behind your face. You stay right where you are. Hold it, Sheriff. Oh, oh, Charlie. Oh, oh. Pull the rifle from the saddle, hold it. You fellas better get mounted and ride off. I don't like anybody sneaking around me at night. 
And I don't like getting mounted and riding away from a fire. Makes my back too good a target. See you? You look like a Texas Ranger. You got good eyes. And I'm a sheriff, Clark. So don't try anything funny. Put that rifle down and let's have a talk. What do you want? What do you want to see me about? I want to invite you to a square dance. You... Hit the dirt, Sheriff. He dropped down. Go behind the fire, Jason. Can't see him. Can't see us either. Must be close behind that fire. Shoot into it. Chip sparks off that heavy log that's burning. Might be able to shower him with a big hot foot. Right. Say when. Let go. That did it, Jace. He's up. Drop your gun, Carp. I did it. You hit it, Jace. There he is. And there's his gun on the ground. Gun stock split. That's what I hit, not him. Shock knocked him out. Yeah. Just the same. He's out cold. And while he's laying here, I might just as well get these cuffs on his hands. Look out, Sheriff! Oh, Cut your heart up! Drop that knife! Let it go! Oh, my arm! Thank you, Jace. He almost planted that in my ribs. Yeah, it's something he won't try again. Come on, Carp. Get up. Save your story for the jury, Carp. Maybe you can tell him how to be a big hit at a square dance. Come on, get moving. Randolph Carp was tried and convicted for the murder of rancher Mort Rogers. The final piece of evidence against Carp was a bloody fingerprint on the steering column of the car he had borrowed from storekeeper Reb Miller. It was Carp's right thumbprint, and the blood specimen matched the type of the slain man. Carp was sentenced to Huntsville Penitentiary for a term of 99 years. Now, here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae. A famous Texas ranger was once asked what he considered the most important quality in a ranger. Well, he pondered, I liken a good ranger to that broad-brimmed hat of mine hanging over there on that old steer horn. It's made of some sort of fabric that holds up. It takes the toughest handling I've ever seen. Must be in the character of the material, I guess, because as old as that hat is, it's never showed a sign of going to pieces. I never did like hats or men that'll come unglued. Good night, folks. See you next week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the MGM production Stars in My Crown. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Lou Krugman, Betty Moran, Harley Bear, Byron Kane, Joe Forte, and Jeanette Nolan. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcock, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keats. Hal Gibney speaking. Massey and Shirley Booth and Theater Guild next on NBC.